something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, I mean, you say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower. You know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use. And when you sing straight from the word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because he is the word and he is perfect theology. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive. Come walk in my ways Come alive Come soak in my presence Light and life Pure delight Bursting forth with life unending Breathing in your love, your love Bursting forth with Life unending Breathing in your love, your love I believe I'm rooted by the river Drinking deep from life-giving streams In your truth I stand unshaken I'm alive
Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's our joy and our privilege to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word, in God's presence, and also in prayer with you. On our program today, we like to do something very simple and yet also something very meaningful. Psalms are a favorite uh, to many of us. Uh, we turn to the Psalms in times when we just want to worship God with uh, the psalmist, or we turn to the psalms in times when we just want to find some encouragement and just, in, uh, uh, just to bring ourselves to put our trust in God. Or we also turn to the psalms when, uh, when they're going through challenges and we identify with some of the psalms that uh, describe challenges, describe struggles, describe uh, difficult situations in life, and we draw strength and uh, uh, encouragement for our hearts uh, in those times through the Psalms. And so on the program today, we just want to uh, take one Psalm, uh, just reflect on it, meditate on it, draw strength, draw inspiration uh, for our lives uh, uh, today. So we'll, let's begin with the very first Psalm. Uh, many uh, writers refer to Psalm 1 as the preface, the introduction to the rest of the Psalms that follow. Psalm 1, and we just look at it verse by verse, just read each verse and try to, you know, draw strength uh, from each of those verses. Psalm 1 and verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So as the psalmist begins this opening psalm, he declares or he pronounces this kind of a person as blessed. And then he describes, begins to describe certain aspects of this person and this manner of life. And here, first, of course, he, he's talking about a man, but this uh, would apply to any one of us, regardless of our gender, male or female. This word, the word of God applies to us, so even though he says blessed is the man. It could also say blessed is the woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. He does not stand in the path of sinners. He doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. So identifying a man who is blessed, the psalmist marks three things that this person does not do. He does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That means he does not take their input. He does not act on what they advise, their recommendations, their suggestions of the ungodly, because here are people who do not care about God, who do not care about the ways of God, who do not care about honoring God. And so many times their counsel can lead us astray, can lead us in ways and in directions that are completely contrary to God himself. And so we need to be careful in the counsel that we receive. Now, this does not mean that we totally disregard the inputs of people who are unsaved or are unbelievers. We're talking specifically of those who are ungodly. And so we not need to draw that distinction. You know, of course, in everyday life, we interact with many people who aren't saved, who don't know the Lord, and we work together. We get their inputs on various things in life, and that's fine because those are just practical things. Those are, those are not the ungodly concept. But what we're referring to is ungodly counsel, counsel that takes us away from God and away from His ways. 
We do not walk according to that. That means we do not live, we do not conduct ourselves, we do not carry out our life according to ungodly counsel, nor does he stand in the path or in the way of sinners. Sinners referring to people who are just doing things that are contrary to God, doing things that are sinful, that are missing the mark, that are missing God's standards. So we don't go in their path. We don't walk along with them. We don't take the direction that their lives take. So we choose not to do those kinds of things. And we don't sit in the seat of the scornful. To sit in the seat of the scornful, referee uh, talks about being a companion, being a friend to those who are scornful, those who speak mockingly, uh, those who speak demeaningly, either about God or sometimes even other people. That We don't become companions with them. So he says, a man who refuses to do these things, he is positioning himself to be blessed by God. He's positioning himself to be in a life that is happy, that is uh, joyous, that is uh, wholesome, uh, that is full, uh, and that is full of meaning. But then he continues on some of the practices of such a man. Verse 2, he says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Two key words, delight and meditate. So a man who is blessed, his delight is in God's word and he meditates in God's word. His delight, that means this is the place where he finds his treasure, where he finds his joy, where he finds a pleasure. His delight is in the law of the Lord, in the statutes of God in the word of God. Just being in God's word is uh, something so pleasurable to him, so delightful to him. And he meditates in that word day and night. Obviously, he's talking about an ongoing, continuous meditation in the word. Now, when you look at the word meditate in Hebrew, it's really talking about not only just deep contemplation, but it's talking about muttering that word to yourself. So you're pondering on something by just muttering it to yourself. Now, this is something we can all do. That means as we go about our day-to-day life, uh, we are obviously not going to be sitting in front of the Bible the whole day. We have to, you know, go about various things. But no matter where we are, we can contemplate on a verse, a, 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 a truth from the Word of God, And whenever possible, we could even recite it to ourselves. We can say the scriptures to ourselves. For example, if you're driving in your car and you're going through, you know, traffic or you have a long drive to work or some other place, you know, you could just mutter the word. You can just say the word, recite the word to yourself. And as you're doing that, you're actually contemplating on that word. You're thinking about that word, uh, what that scripture is saying. So you would say that word. And that is part of meditating. So he meditates in that word day and night. So what happens to such a man? I mean, in what way is such a person blessed, uh, as the psalmist says? So he's a man who refuses to do these three things. He's a man who does these two things in verse 2. What is the outcome? Verse 3, he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. He is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So try to envision this. You know, a land where there are streams of water, rivers of water flowing through, and envision a tree that's planted right there. This tree is going to be alive. It's going to be strong. It's going to be flourishing. It's got all the nourishment it needs. It's going to thrive. And he's saying that's the way a person, uh, this man is going to be, or this person is going to be, who refuses to walk in sinful ways, but he delights in the word of God. He meditates in the word of God. He is going to be alive. He's going to be thriving. He's going to be fruitful. And he says here, he brings forth his fruit in its season. That means fruit, his, his life is going to be fruitful. But also there is this understanding of fruit being born in its season. Now, that's something we must understand or get a grasp of. That means fruit comes in its season. Uh, And every season has a process to it. I know uh, right from the time, and if you you look at it in the natural, right from the time uh, uh, there is pollination taking place, 
uh, the, the, the bud coming forth, uh, uh, and, and eventually the fruit being formed, and the fruit growing and developing and ripening uh, to the point when the fruit is ready to be plucked. It's a process. So what the psalmist is saying is this man's life is so well nourished through what he's meditating and the way he's living, he will bear fruit in its season. He keeps going through the process. There is work involved. There is uh, uh, effort that's going through. But in the time when fruit has to be born, there will be fruit. There will be fruit for his labor. There will be fruit for his endeavors. There will be fruit for things he steps out and takes risks on. And this man will see a reward for all that he puts his hand to. And it says here, his leaf will not wither. So you imagine a tree uh, that is evergreen. Uh, it's so beautiful. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a sign of life. Leaf will not wither. Uh, it's a sign that this tree is not uh, falling apart, not decaying, not losing its strength. But there is life. There is vitality. Uh, there is strength being shown in this tree. And such will be the man that at all times, when you look at him, through all seasons of life, there will be life, strength, vitality. He's alive all the time. And the psalmist says, in, in, in our terms, the psalmist says, whatever he does will prosper. That means you will see the goodness of God upon his life. You will see that what he's doing is bearing fruit. It is succeeding as he goes through seasons, one season of life after another, whatever he does bears fruit. Whatever he does prospers. Now, you know, we must understand that God desires to see his people prosper. God desires to see us succeed. And all of his instructions on walking in righteousness and walking in integrity and walking in purity, are all of that instruction... Uh, and also his word that has been given to us, that builds faith in our hearts, that brings confidence, that brings strength, is all geared towards us being this kind of a tree so that we can prosper, so that we can succeed, so that we can bear fruit uh, in, in our lives. Now, prosperity for each of us could be something different in the sense that, first of all, we want to see our, ourselves prospering spiritually. Uh, we want to see ourselves thriving uh, spiritually, emotionally, or uh, financially, socially, in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, that all of these things are graced by the presence of God and by the goodness of God. That is prosperity, a wholesome prosperity as given to us in Scripture. And God says such a man will prosper. So don't think of prosperity just in financial terms, just monetarily, but think about prosperity as, as, as something where every aspect of our lives is bringing glory to God and it is blessed by God. Such is a man who delights in God, as the psalmist says. But then he begins to contrast such a man with a man who, who is the opposite. He says here in verse 4, the ungodly are not so. So the, the opposite of such a man. They are not like this. They are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Meaning their life is so feeble. It is so easily driven away by the wind. It's there today, but gone tomorrow. And he's saying, in contrast to a man who's walking according to the ways of God, who's delighting and meditating in God's word, who's thriving because of the blessing of God, the ungodly may have their moments of thriving, but in due course of time, they are like the chaff that the wind drives away. They're gone and they're no more. And he says, therefore, the ungodly will not stand in judgment. That means when they are tested, when they have to prove their case, they have nothing to fall back on. They have nothing that can defend them. They are defenseless. And sinners will not be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. When the righteous are standing, the sinners will not be able to stand there because of their wrong ways, our uh, dishonesty. Our sinfulness will not stand, will not uphold us. And then he says, he concludes the psalm in verse 6, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord knows, the Lord is intimately involved in the way of the righteous. God is involved in directing their steps, 
in upholding them in their times of weakness, uh, in uh, bringing them out of their mistakes. So the Lord himself is involved in the path of such a person. But the way of the ungodly only leads to a fatal end. It leads to destruction. It leads to an end that does not bear much fruit. So what can we take away from the psalm? The psalm really is an encouragement for you and me to walk in, a, in ways that are pleasing to God. The psalm is an encouragement to you and I to say that, look, we need purposefully, intentionally, in our daily lives to stay away from the counsel of the ungodly, to stay away from the path of sinners, to stay away from sitting or being companions with those who are scornful, mocking, who speak evil of others. Stay away from those things. Instead, you choose to dwell in the Word of God. You choose to let the Word of God dwell in you. That means you put to practice the things that are in the Word. You meditate in the Word. You live by the Word. And then God says, look, I'm telling you that you will live a life that's full of strength, full of vitality, that you'll be flourishing and that you'll be alive. That's the fullness of life. When you consider the New Testament, Jesus said this. He said, I have come that you may have life and life in all of its fullness. You know, when we dwell with God and walk in his word, that's the kind of life we can experience. Life in all of its fullness. Yes, we will go through various seasons of life. Yes, we will go through the process of life. But there will be the fruitfulness. We will bear up fruit in its season. There will be the prosperity, the success that comes from God flowing into our lives season after season. This is life in all of its fullness. So let's be encouraged to do what the psalmist said, walk the ways of God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the psalm. And we pray, God, that in our day-to-day -day lives, we be deliberate in our choices to avoid ungodly counsel, to refuse the way of the sinful, and not participate in the words of the scornful, the mocking. But God, help us to put our choice and our trust in your word, to enjoy your word, to meditate in your word, to engage with your word, to live by your word. And may our lives be full of life as described by the psalmist. And Father, I pray right now for those who are watching and for some, Lord, who may be going through difficult times and saying, I want to be like that tree planted by rivers of water. I want to be fruitful. I want to see those, that prosperity that God says I can have. So right now, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, let your blessing come upon those listening. Bring them into the seasons of fruitfulness and let them thrive like the psalmist says. Let your blessing come upon their lives, Father, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the Word of God for you. We have a section called Gospel with Tools to help you share the Gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called Reasons where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. When people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the Word of God. We have a section called Identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called On How To where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry? We have a section called Group Study Guides where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes and this, this will keep on growing. 
We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore, download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you. We are in a crucial time in history where the urgency to fulfill God's mandate of reaching souls and making disciples has never been greater and more urgent. For this, we're getting ready to scale up and build APC World Outreach and Equipping Center. This will serve as an equipping center and a missions base using state-of-the-art technology to train, equip, release, and support ministers across our nation and across the globe. In phase one of this project, our goal is to acquire approximately five to six acres of land. That's the first step. In phase two, we are going to set up our Bible college and a media center. In phase three, we will be building our sanctuary where our church family can come together, be trained, equipped, nurtured, and cared for. We know that it's gonna take some amount of sacrifice, but remember every investment you make today will reap great rewards for the kingdom of God in the near future. You can go to our church website, apcwo.org slash build to impact page, where we will give you information on how you can make your contribution or make your pledge of what you will be able to give in the months to come. And we look forward to your partnership. We want to thank you in advance for what you will do to be a part of this vision and to see it happen. So let's work together to build to impact.